Hello and welcome to EC Projects. Today I will be talking about multiplexing. So in my two latest videos I have been showing a circuit where I used multiplexing with a microcontroller to drive some seven segment displays. I also mentioned that one of these analog to digital converter chips uses multiplexing for the output signal. So I thought I would make a video that explains what multiplexing is. So to power up a light bulb like this you will need some voltage across it. Say 12 volts here and 0 volts here. If you add a switch to the circuit either here or here you would be able to turn off the light bulb. And of course it doesn't matter if we disconnect the ground or the positive. So now imagine if we have 100 light bulbs. That would mean 100 switches, right? But this is where multiplexing comes in. That's all about reducing the number of switches that you have to control a given number of light bulbs. And by using a very simple technique we can reduce the number of switches to 20. And to demonstrate how we can do this, we'll take an example of 9 light bulbs. We will take one terminal of each light bulb and connect them across the row. And we will also connect the other terminal of each lamp across the column. And in a configuration like this one, we will need six contacts to control nine lamps, compared to the nine we would use in a traditional configuration. The only thing is that we will have to turn on two switches instead of one. So say if you want to turn on this light bulb, we will turn on this switch, we will have our 12 volts at this side and we'll have our 0 volts at this side. So to turn on this light bulb all we'll have to do is turn on this switch and this switch so current can flow through here. And it cannot turn on any of the other light bulbs even though this one and this one also gets the 12 volts but it cannot get to ground because the circuit is open at these points. We can also turn on this one and this one at the same time because they're in the same column. Or we could turn on this one and this one at the same time. But we will not be able to turn on for example this one and this one because that will also light up these two. And let's try to explain that. To turn on this lamp, you'll need to turn on this switch and this switch. And to turn on this lamp, you'll have to turn on this switch and this switch. But remember, we have also turned this one on. So current can flow through this one and through this one. And the same with these two. So basically at one side you can turn on as many switches as you want to light up more lamps at the same time. But you can only keep one on at a time at the other side. So what do we do if we want to light up an X? What we can do is basically switch between the columns very very fast and then switch in the rows as it's needed. So for the first column we will switch on the top one and the bottom one. It quickly switches to the second column and we'll turn on the middle row. It switches to the third column and we'll turn on the top and the bottom row again. And this will repeat 
and if this goes at about a few hundred hertz you will not be able to notice that they are not on at the same time but this will of course mean that every of these columns will only be on at any given time and they will be off for the rest of the time so that will give us a 33% on time and unfortunately that will also mean a 33.3% brightness well all this might seem as a bad trade-off you only save 3 pins and you lose 66% of the brightness but let's just add another 7 lamps and let's see what will happen and I'm sorry it doesn't look pretty but I hope you get the idea you can see for adding 7 more lamps we only got 2 more switches so now we have 8 switches to control 16 lamps and these numbers would be 25% instead and if we scale this to 10 by 10 we will have 20 switches to control 100 lamps we can of course also do this with 7 segment displays where we will have 7 traces to control the digits there is one for the decimal point as well but we don't necessarily need that and there will only be added one extra wire for each display so if you add a third display you will only get one extra wire you could add a hundred displays and you would just have a hundred of these wires plus the seven for the segments or eight if you want to include the dot point so if you had a hundred displays that would be 700 pins if you are not using multiplexing and with multiplexing that would be a hundred and seven of course as I said we have to make this alternating between the displays so fast that we cannot see them flickering if this goes very slow it will just update one and the other one and the other if it goes a little bit faster we will start to see uh, the displays flickering and if it goes as fast as it should we will not even notice that they are being multiplexed so in this demonstration I added the option to increase the delay between the updates so if you press this button you can easily see the individual display lighting up and you might notice the brightness is increasing as well when the display is lighting up but on average the brightness will be the same as if I release the button but it will look much more uniform and in the end we will take a look at the code I used to drive these displays I am using a 4511 driver chip so the signal coming from this microcontroller will be a binary coded decimal the 4511 will translate that into the seven segments so that can be displayed on these seven segment displays I am simply using a transistor to switch in the ground for each display when that display needs to be updated so the transistors will alternate and switch in the correct display I have also built up an example of an LED matrix that is driven through multiplexing here I am alternating between the rows switching in the ground with a transistor and the columns go to the microcontroller I'm just using the pins directly for the columns because only one of these LEDs is on at a time but more LEDs can be on at a time across the rows so I will need a transistor to that because the microcontroller cannot sync 
all that current. And we will also take a look at the code for this one. But before we get to the code, let's take a look at this schematic for the circuit with the 7 segment displays. I am using a PIC16F616 microcontroller and I'm using that to send a signal to this 4511 decoder chip. I have already done a video of this one so you can check that out if you want to know more about this chip. But all this basically does is to convert a binary number into the signal that is needed to drive a 7 segment display. So you go from 4 wires to 7 wires. We use some current limiting resistors because this circuitry is running at 5 volts and the individual segments in the displays cannot take that so we need a resistor. And as you can see after these resistors this display has all its segments linked to the corresponding ones of this display. And if you had 3 or 4 displays you would just link in those segments as well. So in slow motion what is happening here is the PIC has some code in it. If we want to write 10 to these displays it will send a 1 to the decoder. That will set a 1 on these pins. And the PIC will turn on this transistor. So it will show a 1 on this display. And this one is turned off so this will be blank. When this has lit up for a fraction of a second this transistor will turn off again, the microcontroller will put a zero here and this will be translated into the segments. The pick will turn on this transistor and it will light up a zero here and this will of course be off so this display will be blank. And when this is going very fast you cannot see that only one is on. So let's take a look at the code. And all this first part of the code is not that important. I have set everything to be uh, outputs except for one pin on the board A because I need that for my button to slow down the display so with, as you saw we could see the multiplexing. I have started up a timer that I'm using and this is basically just to do with the timer. And after this timer I end up with a variable V that will increment to 9 and reset to 0. And here I have my delay and that's simply if the button is not pressed the delay will be a thousand microseconds and if it is pressed the delay will be 80,000 microseconds. So we will be able to see the displays alternating. I set the port A to 0 Remember this was these two transistors, so they will both be off. I set port C equal to V, so it will display the number up here. And I set port A to 1. And a 1 in binary is of course just a 1. And the binary number for port A corresponds to the pins on the chip. So there will be six pins and it will take the six least significant digits. When this is set to one, this value will show up on the first display and it will delay for either a thousand or eighty thousand microseconds depend depending if the button is pressed or not. And it will do exactly the same thing for the other display. And notice we have a two here and that will of course be a zero one. So the first pin will be off and the next pin will be on. So this will be off and this will be on. And you could of course put another variable here if you wanted something else to display on the second display. I just chose the same. And if you had to use this in a product you probably would not have these delays in there because that would, the code would just sit there for a thousand microseconds doing nothing and wait for the delay to expire and then move on. And if I had a third display I would do exactly the same. And this time I will set port A to 4 because a 4 will be 0, 0, 1. You could of course 
put this for in binary by writing a 0b followed by your bits. And this might be a little bit easier to see. The pins on the port A is called RA followed by the number of the pin starting with 0. And pin 0 will be the first digit, pin 1 next, pin 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and 7. But in this case 6 and 7 is not there, there's only 0 through to 5, so 6 pins. So the way that I did the dot matrix display was exactly the same. I had a 5x5 five five array. This is only a 4x4, four four, but that doesn't matter. So I had 5 transistors instead of the 2 with the 7 segment displays. And I had 5 inputs on this side as well. I did exactly the same thing with the transistors connected to port A. And the other inputs to the display were from port C. And here I just made a software counter that increments A by 1 every time the code runs through. And I just did something different to this number for each of the lines. I start by turning off all the transistors or blanking the display. I change the column here. And I enable the line that I want to light up. I then increment A by 1, so it's ready for the next time the code runs through. And there's a little delay here. It then moves on. Set ports A to 0 again, blanking the display. Changing the column. Here I have another variable B. And I will take that, divide it by 100, and subtract that from 31. So that will basically count down instead of up. I then set port A to 2, so this will show on the second line of the display. And so on for the rest of the code. Except when I get to the fourth line, then I have to skip a pin here because RA3 cannot be an output, that can only be an input. So I have to skip that. And then exactly the same with this last one. So, there is of course a lot more to multiplexing than this. You could go three dimensions instead of two dimensions. You could connect the LEDs up in different ways, or drive the displays in different ways, make different patterns and so on. But anyway, this was just meant to be a brief introduction. So I hope you liked the video and uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See ya!